today I'm dehydrating corn. I mentioned in um, a few of my other videos that I had dehydrated frozen peas and corn and they don't rehydrate well for me. And uh, I found that if I dehydrate canned peas and corn that they rehydrate extremely well, um, especially the corn. It comes back just as tender and sweet as if it was just straight out of the can. Um, the frozen dehydrated corn came back um, tasteless and tough and sticks to your teeth. So I've been buying the, um, the large cans from Sam's Club. Uh, the corn is $3.28 and the peas are $3.58. And one of the large cans is the equivalent of seven of the small cans. So it's a pretty good deal. It works out to less than 50 cent a can if you were buying the small cans. And um, I don't know who on earth could use one of these large cans because there's 24 servings in each one. But um, all I do is drain the corn and put it in the dehydrator. Let it run for five or six hours. And uh, here's some of the corn after it's been dehydrated. And here's some that I rehydrated. You see it comes back just like canned corn. Um, when I took this pot out to cook the corn, I um, thought about the days back when I first got married. Um, times were pretty hard for us. and uh, my cook stove I only had one burner that worked and uh, I used this double boiler to cook just about everything we ate uh, it's actually two pots if you've never seen one it's two pots one fits inside of the other and I would cook um, rice or potatoes or pasta in the bottom pot and then the vegetables in the top and then have uh, whatever meat we were having going in the oven and uh, I thought I would mention this because if you find yourself in a situation with a camp stove or something, uh, the, a double boiler is a very handy thing to have because you can cook several things at one time. And it's also a good way to save on energy because you can uh, use one burner on your stove instead of two. So you might want to think about getting a double boiler. That one's been good to me. I've had it for 35 years now. Um, but back to the the peas and corn. If uh, I grow peas and corn, but they're very um, labor intensive. With the peas, you have to pick them and shell them out, and then by the time you can them, you're up all night long, you know, and end up with a few jars of peas. And the corn, same thing. You have to shuck it and get all those little silks off of it, and cut the corn off the cob. And, can it has a long process in time and uh, since I'm still working canning peas and corn are a problem for me so that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to put things into long term term excuse me long term storage uh, because it's it's uh, so labor intensive with the labor that's involved that's a real good deal on, on the peas and corn also, I have a lot of small cans of peas and corn that I haven't used, and uh, they still have a lot of good deals on canned goods out there. This week, a lot of stores have the canned goods for 50 cents a can, uh, so I'm taking my small cans and dehydrating them as well, and uh, going out and buying the new cans uh, as a way to refresh my, my food storage. There's another idea for you. If you've had problems with um, dehydrating the frozen, give the can a try. It turns out very well for me. So, hope it helps.